Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, Raichu Plays here. In today's episode we are going to get cracking with the European Fallow Deer enclosure. And since recording the last video I have decided to also do the Red Deers here as well. Um, I think both of them would complement each other. They are going to be separate enclosures, kind of running in that kind of direction down there I think. So it's going to kind of be like a parallel enclosure to what they've got here but pretty much going to be similar. Um, I've got a cool idea to do some kind of like, um, not so much indoor section, but I want to have like a little cutout V here in like each of the enclosures just so the guests can stand in it's like one way glass. Because what I want to do is I want to use some like thicker wooden bits and then probably some so quite quite elusive deers are so I don't want it all to be like completely open. So I'm just going to get that straight in just while I'm thinking about it. Um, I am just going to use like a standard, potentially the first wall piece I see, because I'm going to delete it out shortly. So um, let's just use the, we'll use the Arctic ones just so I can get everything that I need in. So I'm thinking, actually, maybe if I do actually use this piece, um, just like that. And then what I can do from here is I can just move it to... Um, to roughly where I want it. So I want something like that and then what I could also do as well is I could just pop straight into into this grid and I could just use the European pieces that we've been using for the rest of the videos. Um, so I could use these little wall pieces, the one meter ones, where are they? There they are. So I could use them just like that, because I don't think we're going to get any kind of Z fighting, so we should be okay. Yeah, it all seems okay, so that's not not too bad. But the most important thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to get the grid aligned in this bit like that. So I kind of wanted it, probably have to delete this little piece out just for now. Okay, and then we'll just have to just kind of reconnect it just as just as we see fit kind of thing. So maybe something like that. And then I was thinking potentially if that's uh, no, I don't like that. Let's try there. Uh, it would be ideal if I could get something into there without the path going a little bit weird. So let's just try with like maybe a six. I think that could. There we go, that works better. So just because the path system is awkward as we know in the game. Uh, I'm just going to do it like that. So that gives me pretty much what I want. So I want this just to be like a bit where you can actually come in and have a look out. And then the rest is going to be kind of covered up with, I'm thinking, potentially the log pieces. So if I just grab them now, so maybe something, or I could use these ones that the lady made actually. That could be a good shout. Um, do you know what, I might actually use these. Because I feel like these would go quite well. Just to give it that kind of different sort of texture because then obviously you can still kind of see not so much all the way through but you can see some uh, some little bits and and bobs and I feel like if I just carry it around it should should be okay I think as well I've got some a little bit of an idea or around here so I'm thinking if I hire that up like like that, I should be able to create like a little viewing platform into both of them. And I don't think it's too too steep as well, so it should should be okay. Um, let me just see if I can bring it down anyway. Let's just make that as straight as possible. I don't know why the angle was a little bit weird then, because no matter which angle, well, 
I'll say no matter, but the angle like this didn't require steps, but if it went slightly to the right, it needed steps, so that was a little bit a little bit weird, so I don't really know why why it did that. Um, so let's just carry this all the way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of mix and match it a little bit. Um, I'm probably going to go over to this bit, I think. Just like that, I think. And then when I get to to these kind of areas, I am just gonna oops, just gonna sink it down. So we're probably gonna sink it down to around there, uh, just like that. Actually, I probably have to do that one on the outside, and then potentially let's try and use a couple of the others actually. Just to give it a little bit of variation throughout the build, um, I like these ones because they cover quite a lot of quite a lot of area, um, and I think as well for deer and stuff. If I had bushes and stuff, it's it's quite a nice little um, little mix as such. Um, for the middle, I am going to go for the chain link fence, just because I'm kind of thinking for future. I could tend to have like a little gate here where they're just kind of like separated into two. So what I'm going to do just so it's not as tedious, I'm just going to go around the edge and just complete this. Um, it's just a mix of um, these pieces. I can pop the link to these in the in the description below and I'll also do the null barrier just along this and then I will come back at the end and then we'll, we'll kind of catch up where I got to. Hi guys, okay, so what I've done is I've added the barriers all around the outside. Um, I have just noticed this bit as well, which I'm not overly happy with. Um, so let me just try that again because I don't really know why that did that. Um, but I can try something just a little bit different in the hopes. There we go, that's fine. Um, and then I can just patch it up however I need to. Um, so I'm probably going to do it like that, I think. So what I did was I'm only going to keep this kind of wooden log effect just around the front bit. Because then there's also going to be like an elevated platform where you can see. So I have just added in a mix of trees. Um, I've kind of used a couple of reference images that I've took when I've been out taking pictures of deers and stuff in the UK. Um, so there's quite a lot of pines in the UK in certain forests. There's quite a lot of just like standard trees. Um, I've got this maple tree, obviously I don't think we have maple trees in the UK, I'm not 100% sure. But like ash trees and then I've just put some like other maple trees in. Um, I've also got oak trees as well because they're quite common throughout the UK. Um, I'm not sure on this pine whether, obviously it's Himalayan so it's not going to be a UK one but it's the closest one I could get. Um, so pretty much what I am going to do is I'm just going to add some like ferns because I tend to see quite a lot of deers when there's forests with quite a lot of ferns and stuff in them. Um, so I believe it's called Bracken in the game, yeah it is. So what I've done is I've just put random rotation on, um, just kind of kind of do like really random clusters like this, um, probably just going to be completely, completely random, there's not really going to be much, much thought going into the kind of placements of these, um, obviously quite a lot of bushes and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just going to be kind of decorating this. Um, just making sure it's got pretty cool hiding places and stuff. Um, different heights as well for the bracken I think would be quite good. Um, I also want to make sure as well that it looks kind of presentable from the front as well. So obviously just kind of want no, no kind of structure to, to where the ferns actually are. Um, so potentially something like that. And they've got like a little walkway in here and stuff. Um, just kind of covering the base of the trees and stuff. Um, probably put some little bunches here like this just so they've got a little bit of shelter. Um, I have got random rotation on as well so I see when I'm clicking it's just automatically rotating it so I don't have to do it. Um, I've recently been playing um, Planet Coaster which doesn't have random rotation it's quite <laughs> it's pretty annoying from kind of going backwards a bit but it's, um, it's doable. You can also do manual rotation but it's just easier just to flick it on and let it do what it needs for you. 
Um, so yeah, I'm thinking something like that. And then just kind of doing long grass all the way through. Because um, obviously deers do like longer grass. Um, so something like that, I'm thinking. I might just go through and add some some other little details towards the end or something. But I think the majority of this, this enclosure is going to be long grass. Um, I will just tidy up around around the fronts and stuff. So all I need to do now is just build the kind of little stable area here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to potentially run like a staff path just down, potentially through the woods to be fair, just to keep it out of the way. Obviously I need to keep these areas because we're going to carry this theme of the Avery's all the way around. So pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build almost like a little wooden, wooden shack for them as such. Um, I don't know if there's any, let's have a look see if there's any in-game that I actually like, just to see. I don't tend to, uh, to use any of the in-game stuff, but I mean if there's anything that I could use, no, I don't like that. Um, I used to use these ones quite a lot for deers, because I think these ones are pretty cool, but I don't really plan on using them. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use potentially the arctic wood. Um, just to keep it in line with the front viewing station, um, I'm going to use that just to um, just for continuity as such. Because um, I think if I start using different stuff, it's going to look a little bit odd. So just to kind of give them a bit of privacy, I'm just going to create two two doors, just because I want to kind of segregate this bit off. I think um, so. I'm going to have them. Potentially to there, I can just move the, um, the barriers to fit it as best as possible. Um, obviously, that one's going to be a little bit larger, but it's not not the end of the world. Because what I can do is I can just click on this barrier if I can get to it. Just click on the middle piece like that, and then I can just attach it in like that, and then that should run. And to be fair, I can probably even change that into null barrier. And then I can also move this one back as well. And I can just tidy up all these barriers. Um, just pull them in as close as possible. Change that to null. Change that to null. And then just move that in to there. Yeah, actually, I can go a lot closer. So we'll move that to there like that. Um, the one thing that I have forgot to do is just add a null barrier along the front. So I'm just going to do that now whilst I think about it. Um, just going to think about this the best as possible. I uh, just want it to be there like that. And then what I can do is I can move that just back a little bit. And then I can pretty much just do the same here. So I can just move that to there. Just take the length off that bit. And then as long as that's behind the barrier, it's not too much of a problem. Because obviously the null barrier is going to be hidden. So having a look around, everything here looks to be okay. Um, I am just going to move that back a little bit and then I'm also just going to push that back slightly as well just like that so I think so far this is pretty cool with what I'm what I was hoping to do so I've kind of got the the foresty bit where they can they can go in and obviously they'd probably be in here quite a lot of the time and then they've got their little kind of off show area here which I've not complete yet um, this is just going to be like a stable as such there's going to be nothing nothing complex to it so let me just finish that off let me grab the rest of the pieces um, I am probably going to flat roof this I know that's um, a little bit boring but it's just um, like I say it's it's literally just just a stable it's just where they can go just where they can rest and just get all their um, shelter needs as such. Um, I am going to move all of these pieces back one piece 
just so they fit nicely underneath here. And I will just have to mend the barriers slightly on this side because I did it to, to the end, but it's fine. I can just move it back like that, then that fits nice and snug. So pretty much like that. What we also need as well so the keepers can get in and out is a keeper gate. So I'm going to add that around here, I think, just like that. And then I think that gives quite a nice little little area for the European fallow deer. Uh, I am going to add the one-way glass on this side. Um, I knew these were going to start Z fighting, but the only way I can think to get rid of it is doing that. That's the only way I'm going to be able to stop stop it fighting like that. Um, so let's just go with that and hope for the best. Just turn random rotation off. Okay, so just going to flip them around because we need it around there. So obviously we don't want the deers to see out but we want people to be able to see them so just like that and then it's just a case of pretty much copying everything over and then we should just be able to do a 90 degrees let me just check the, the depth as such I just want that one to go back a little bit Okay, and that's pretty much how I wanted it. So you can come in, and then obviously from here, the deers can't really see out. Um, obviously they've got this here, but only the staff can interact with that. Um, what I'll do as well is I probably will put another one of these potentially there, I think. I know it is quite a big tree, but let's just move that around a bit. I don't need climbing enabled on any of them. So it is quite um, it's quite a long walk from the rest of the zoo, but obviously I kind of want to fill this area. Um, whilst I am here, I'm going to I'm trying to think if I've got everything in here that I need. Yeah, I'm going to delete all of this because I no longer require it. I've got the bits and bobs that I need in the game. So I can just copy and paste like the bounce castles there. I've got the pigsties in there, so that's fine. And the um, pigsties are on, on the workshop anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. What I'm going to do just around the edges, I'm just going to add some bushes. So I think I'm going to use the same as what I used around here. And possibly just going to use these smaller trees and just kind of sink them not so much carelessly, but I want to um, want to make sure random rotations on as well. Um, just want a little bit of. No, I don't like that actually. Um, what can I put around here that's going to make it? Maybe I might actually leave that as it is because nobody can actually get to. Anybody, people that can see through these fences to this and I guess you could use it as like a little spy hole um, quite a lot of zoos do have something like that and obviously the deers can't can't get out um, here as well I could put some some food vendors and stuff um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pretty much copy because it's going to be like a parallel kind of thing on this side um, so what I'm going to do is I am just literally going to copy it over and pretty much do the same so I'll be back in two seconds and all of this side will be complete. So that is both of the enclosures mirrored um, what I've decided is I'm gonna just do like some little rock beds here and just some plants um, obviously the education I know we're playing in um, in sandbox mode so it's not not exactly required um, but the education would would go on there um, let me just check the the heights because I've seen a couple where they were a little bit higher than normal um, but no that's fine um, for these ones I have 
I've not so much hidden them, um, but let's just get them names. So European uh, Fallow Deer. I do wish we had more deers in the game because there's quite a lot of species that would be good. Um, there's like the white-lipped deer and then the roe deer. I think that would be quite good as well. Um, obviously the muntjac as well. That would be a cool one. Uh, Chinese water deer would also be cool. The seeker deer, that would be cool. Um, I know you can get mods to get them, but I'll probably do that once. Planet Zoo is completely done and dusted. I will uh, <laughs> probably venture into mods because I don't fancy breaking my game just yet. Um, I know it's pretty safe if you do it, do it correctly. But no, my luck, I'll, I'll bugger it up. So not gonna, not gonna chance it just yet. I will just wait until until there's gonna be no like major updates or anything. Um, oh, I've left it on pause mode. Sorry, but that's fine. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flatten these. These are going to act as, as kind of lakes as such. Um, just to give it some some kind of definition. Um, I am just going to put some rock texture around the edge. Just like that. And I'm going to move anything that needs to. So I was thinking... Yeah, I'll move that fern back actually because... It's going to look a little bit silly just there I think. Um, do it like that for now. And then we're just going to go around the edges with rock on this one as well. I completely did that bit behind the menu blind, so I hope I got most of it. Mm, close. Okay, so I'm thinking just like that. And then obviously you can kind of look over this way. You can probably see them drinking. Um, you probably see them stood here or something. But I imagine most of the time they're going to be back in the forest. So I think these... These one-way glass bits are, are quite good to kind of see see the deers and stuff. Uh, obviously we've got this as well so we can kind of... I think I prefer this one though because it's a little bit more... A little bit more deery. It's got more more pines and stuff which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I think kind of decoration wise that's pretty much, uh, pretty much it. So let's grab some of the deers. So we need red deer. So we need a pretty decent stag, we're going to go with that one. And then I don't know if you call these does or not, I'm not 100% sure, but um, we'll grab a couple of these. So we want a pretty, pretty decent herd. So obviously we're only just going to have females. Okay, and then I think that's it, we're gonna, not going to go too crazy, because <laughs> I think I've got loads here. Um, Jesus Christ, yeah I've got loads. Oh well, it's fine. The enclosure's big enough. So we're just going to pop them into the quarantine just for now. Not sure if they'll all fit, but... Wasn't liking that. Um, what I do need to do as well is I just need to connect up the path. So let's get that staff path connected. I'm just going to pop it. I'm going to do the red because I think that would be quite nice. Um, I am just going to do it through the bushes like that, I think. Just like that, and then from here as well. And then I'm going to come out, yeah, just there like that. Okay, so let's grab the fallow deers now. So let's get rid of that. Oh, I just saw a red deer that I want. Uh, longevity is not amazing. No, we won't do that. We'll see if there's any cool European fallow deers. That male is good. One minute fifteen left. And then for females, I'm just gonna get kind of just grow a little bit crazy and just grab whichever. Obviously some of them have got really bad stats, so they're probably not gonna breed, but hoping a handful of them do. Um this one, is that one different? Yeah, these two are different, so they're cool. So let's grab them too. So that one's lighter and that one's a little bit darker. Um, right, we'll, we'll just leave it at that, I think. We'll, we'll not go too crazy. I think just for my own sanity, I am going to add a quarantine block here, I think. I'm going to add like a larger one just so I can 
just get them all through through the door a little bit quicker. And then I might also add one on the opposite side as well. Actually, no, we'll leave it as it is. Um, I'll put the fallow deer in here because I've sent the red. I've done it, done it the wrong way around, but it's fine. We will um, we learn from our mistakes, but it's completely fine. So, ooh. okay, so I'll pop those ones into that quarantine, and then once they're done, what we'll do is we'll pop them in. So once quarantine's done, I'm not going to sit around and wait for the quarantine to complete. I will just come back when all the animals are in the enclosure, and then we'll get all the enrichment and everything surrounding it sorted. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so the red deers have made it into their enclosure. I'm just waiting for a couple more. I don't think the stag has made it in yet. Um, but we've got the female ones. I believe they are does. I know different species call them like hinds and stuff. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not fully clued up on my deers. But um, yeah, a couple of them have made it in. And then let's just check on the European fallow deer. So these have also made it in as well. Um, these guys do look very similar to seeker deers. Um, we do have a very small population of seeker deer in the UK as well. Um, again, not meant to be here, but they somehow made it made it over. Um, don't think the the stags have made it just yet, but we've got a couple of the females which are looking pretty cool. Um, I really wanted to create this kind of like cool woodland area because it's very similar to like what I would typically see in the UK where I tend to see like deers in the wild and stuff. It's got loads of kind of like ferns and long grass and just like loads of tall pine trees and stuff. Um, oh, having a nap by the tree. So pretty much from there, I've seen a lot of the running with the stuff now, so there's more coming. Uh, let's have a look. Just want to see if the stag has arrived yet. Uh, nope. We haven't got one on that side. And we may have one now. No, that's another female. Okay, that's fine. They'll arrive at some point. Um, I do want to know if that cool one that I found has gone in yet, because I'm pretty sure I found like um, a different colour morph. It's not massively different, but it's, uh, it's still pretty cool. So let's get the enrichment added for the fallow deers and the red deers. So I am just going to pretty much just click it for both, just so I can mix and match because it's going to be very similar they're both very similar species of deer so we're going to use that we're going to use the um, food trough and we are going to pop them inside of here uh, just because deers are quite quite shy animals um, obviously we don't want to um, second one just control z that and then i'm just going to make this like a kind of eating quarters just for them in there and then in this part this is going to be more of like a I'll just pop the random rotation on for that. Uh, oh, it's, on, it's just not rotated it. Um, just something like that, I think. Just so they can come in and kind of relax if they need to. Get away from, from the guests, even though it is one-sided. Um, but yeah, it just creates a little bit of kind of privacy for them and stuff. So we're just going to leave that at that. Um, obviously, throughout the enclosure, I am going to try and hide the enrichment just so I can preserve that natural look as best as possible so just kind of doing stuff like that also apologies if you do hear banging in the background i do live really really close to a farm and i think they've got like a, a machine which scares off the birds from the crops and stuff and it keeps going off and <laughs> it keeps making me jump but i do apologize if you can hear it in the background um hopefully not this microphone is pretty good at cancelling out like background sounds so if you do hear banging in the background then you know what it is so something like that i think so the keeper will fill these up and they just put like bushes and just kind of like browse in there um i am gonna add a couple of the scratching posts as well uh, just because I, re I do really really like these um, i'm just gonna add these in places where i think we'd kind of see these and just thinking more of like an eye view as well so obviously from here you can see all three of them and then also, oh, let me get to the to the red deer pod. So yeah, you can also see them from there as well. Um, I am going to add one potentially just there like that. And then I may add one in there. Okay, so water, we don't need to worry about that because we have got a natural 
drinking pond here. Um, I might add, let me just check their enrichment and just see what they're like. So I don't know if they're quite fussy or not. Uh, no, that's quite good for them actually. So, oh, just using scratching post then. Yeah, so that's all good actually. So that amount of enrichment is okay for these. So what I can do now is I can just add some kind of like European plants and stuff. Um, I know we haven't got a wide selection in the UK as such, but I can still add a few a few bits and just kind of spruce it up a little bit. Obviously I don't want to go too crazy because some of the stuff we're probably not even going to see in the UK. So we're just going to probably pad these bits out just like that. I do want to add some some kind of like colour variation as well. Um, I don't know if I've got anything kind of like a big a bigger bush that I can kind of use. Potentially something like that. We'll just kind of see how that looks. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, it just adds a little bit of colour and a tiny little bit of definition and stuff. Um, I think because I did make all of it long grass, I am going to change that. Because what I want to do is I want to just have oh, just have some areas where it's um, kind of like muddy. So I'm just going to turn the intensity up. And just make it look like all these all these areas are a little bit worn and stuff, and obviously it just hides these um, these marks that I made, my little uh, <laughs> planning marks. Um, so we're just going to add it like that, and then around the areas which it already is, we're just going to add more more kind of grass, and then I'm going to shrink it right down to around two. And I am just going to put like little pathways into the forest, I think, just like that. Just to make it look like they do use these these tracks to get to where they need to. Um, and it just breaks up the terrain a little bit as well. Like I say, it doesn't need to go all the way back. It's just just where I think it would, it would work and look quite nice. So we're just going to kind of do this to there. And it just breaks it up a little bit as well. So same again here. We'll just make it look like the walk kind of this angle to there. Um, like I say, these these probably won't pace because they're quite commonly kept in like country houses and stuff around the UK. Not actually in, in the house if you're not aware what a country house is. It's just like um, almost kind of like a royal royal estate as such. It was probably owned by like a duke or something back in, in the olden days. And most of the time now you kind of just pay to go in and have a walk around the grounds and stuff. Um, Personally, not my cup of tea. Um, I know you can buy memberships in the UK to go and have a walk around and stuff, but I much prefer being in like wild areas and having a look at not so much captive animals, which kind of defeats the object of this zoo, but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, these are here for educational purposes, we'll say. Um, so that is pretty much it for both of the deer areas. Um, I'm quite happy with how they turned out. Obviously, education isn't important, but we might add it at some point. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, I'm quite happy with how this turned out, actually. I think it works quite well. Um, the stag's in now, which is good. So let's have a look at him. Having a little kind of wander around as well. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool. And trust me to do that whilst he was doing his business. Um, I want to get quite a cool outlook of all of them. I think that'd be quite cool. Um, just thinking of uh, images for the thumbnail. I usually do this off camera, but I thought that was quite cool while it was there. Um, let me see if the fallow deer stag, yep, I see him. Here he is. So these two will be the stars of the of the show on the <laughs> on the cover of the thumbnail. Um, so let me get a pretty cool kind of picture of them. Obviously, both of these deers are in the wild in the UK. Um, the fallow deer isn't native. The only native deers we have is the red deer and the roe deer. So I've not seen a wild red deer. I think. 
very nearly ran some over in Scotland, unfortunately, quite a while ago. Um, me and my friend went camping and these massive deers just literally ran out on the road. Obviously good reflexes because I managed to stop the car in time. Um, so they were completely fine, luckily we didn't collide. Um, but fallow deers, I've seen a couple in fields like driving past and stuff. Um, they tend to be quite skittish, I've noticed when I've had my camera on me and I've seen a fallow deer as soon as you kind of get out of the car and they see you in the distance they just go straight for the forest. Um, Row deers I'd probably say are quite the same as well I don't think the farmers over here like them because they do eat all the um, all of the agricultural crops so they can cause some problems um, whereas all the other deers just kind of munch on forestry stuff. Um, like I said, we've got a couple of, we've got an invasive species which I personally like. I don't like calling them invasive species because they're pretty cool. Um, but that's the muntjac. We've got loads of them in the UK. Um, I found the Chinese water deer last weekend as well in Norfolk. So I'll pop a little photo up here as well. Luckily managed to see one. Um, that was just at a marsh. Obviously I'm not going to give the location away for that one. And so also saw a muntjac there as well, which walked straight past me and let me take loads of photos really, really close up. So that was good. But yeah, we're in our uh, deer era at the moment. So pretty cool. Putting the camera at good use. But yeah, I'll put some photos up here of my um, my recent trip because I got some pretty cool pictures. Um, I think for this area, I am pretty much done. Um, I was thinking of adding trees to this area, but I don't know because I quite like having it a little bit open I might save this for some like shops or something but I know we said previously we we're just going to do some like rockery here and stuff so we're going to do that up um, what I am going to use is I'm going to use the Tiago ones or the tiger ones I'm just going to use um, the smaller ones apologies just like that okay and that is the areas for the red deer and the fallow deer is complete what i've done just off camera is i've just filled in these bits so obviously where we was before i was just going to make some kind of like little rock beds kind of thing um but i've gone for these kind of like rock bracken and either alive trees or or dead pines so i've just kind of gone with that um, i also built this i wanted it to kind of look like a little like bird watching tower um, there's quite a lot in the nature reserves in the UK similar to this kind of style where obviously people like myself with the cameras would kind of sit for hours on end to wait and see some birds but it's kind of above the deer so you can kind of look down and um, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to do some kind of small rocks around the edge of this so I just did like a terrain paint and then I just kind of left the front bit kind of kind of plain as such um, I've got these little viewing areas as well. They are one-sided glass so you can kind of come right up to it and see kind of like the deer in the flesh. And then, yeah, that is pretty much where we got to. It's quite a big area compared to the rest of the zoo. I think, yeah, the, the La Gibbon area we did a couple of episodes ago is a lot bigger, but we've um, finally finished it, so that's good. Um, so on to the next one um, we're going to start filling in these areas and um, we're also going to fill in some kind of like aviaries and stuff around here but if you have enjoyed this video and um, let me know down below what you want to see next and um, I'm a little bit stuck at the minute what to kind of go on to I did think of doing kind of like an African savannah or something here and then obviously the little little aviaries and stuff we're going to use a couple of the um, Drax bird pieces as well and then yeah so what I'll do now is I'll actually pop a path in I think I'm gonna kind of just use this style I think and we're probably just gonna kind of create a bit of a random shape um, just so we're all set up and ready for the next episode so you can kind of split off and then we'll probably have some probably like some meerkats or something here and possibly some aardvarks there I think um, just to kind of break it in and then possibly here we'll have some some kind of like monkey island or something and um, possibly chimps or something if we do like a house here a house here and do like two separate islands and um, not sure I'll sketch some up on on my little notepad and just kind of figure out what to do from from this kind of space and um, but yeah if you have enjoyed this one drop a comment below and um, drop a like and subscribe and um, we should hopefully be a lot more regular now I did have a tiny little break from during recording this. I think it was like a two month break 
record in this area. But yeah, hopefully getting back into the swing of it. Not giving up on Planet Zoo just yet. Still got loads of ideas. So yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. And I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you.